Okay. Uh, you know what? Maybe... Maybe there's something over here we haven't seen yet. These pieces of information do go together. On the day of the incident, the electrician had been asked to repair the deceased's air. The electrician went to the deceased's room at noon and left after finishing his work. Both the deceased's neighbor and the electrician himself agree on this. Missing. I'm missing something. Let's listen yes, to this that's again. A, a murder? Yes, that's fine. He said his air was broken and it needed to be fixed. That was around noon, I think. That was. Yes. He said he needed it fixed that day, so I went straight there. Yeah, it was really quick. All I had to do was swap out a cable. Okay. That's... That's a lot of time. Oh, I didn't want to back out of it. Yes, I fixed his heater. The customer? Well, the way he looked, I wouldn't be surprised if he... It wouldn't be surprising if the deceased committed suicide. Sounds like an important detail. That's suspicious. Does that mean the deceased had a motive for killing himself? That's peculiar. Uh. Indeed. Both of these facts relate to the deceased. The last time the deceased was seen alive was... It 
had to be between noon and one because he was the, because the electrician was there for an hour. That's right. At that time, he seemed. Uh. Seemed depressed because the electrician said that. Depression, suicide, I guess. I don't see anything else. Yes. This comes from the electrician's testimony. The last time we believe the deceased could have been alive is. The latest time he could still be alive was at 3, because the fire started sometime between 3 and 3.30, and he was confirmed dead after that, so... Yep. Hmm. Indeed. The neighbor reports hearing a sound from the room at that time. Within an hour after that, a fire started in his room. The deceased was later discovered dead. That's all we know at this point. Okay, let's look at these evidence cards. Uh... Okay... Hey, little guy. I want to go through the information that we've gathered so far. All right. Let's piece it all together step by step. Let's do that. The deceased, Dennis Taylor, was found dead in his apartment. Let's see. His body was discovered because... His body was discovered because... Yeah, of course, yes. the fire. But by the time firefighters arrived on the scene, the fire had already gone out. His corpse was found on the bed. That's right. The FBI and police initially ruled this case as a suicide. The reason for that was... Ah... Uh, obviously the slashed wrist. That's correct. The other reason was... Uh the door, right? Because the place was locked. Indeed. The slashed wrist and the chain door point towards suicide. It would seem he was so desperate for death that he would both slit his wrist and set his room on fire. That isn't a surprising conclusion. The knife blade does match the shape of the wound in the wrist. The blood on the blade matches his DNA. Lastly, the deceased's fingerprints were found on the handle of the knife. Hmm. Those are all true, but there was something odd about that wound on his wrist. First... Well, the wound was so clean. Another point is... Um, the knife was in his injured hand. His finger was fractured. Would he have been able to use a knife with a wounded hand? I wouldn't be able to hold a fork in it in the same hand. Like, I would have to have that in a cast or something. It's very unlikely. But that's not the only thing that raises doubt. I'm actually really lucky. I'm 25 years old and I've never broken if a bone. If he did die of the knife wound, he would have bled to death. However, investigating the corpse points to a different cause of death. That is... Oh, right, the eyes. Something more consistent right. with death the by suffocation. The eyes and the strange bruise on his abdomen. There's more than enough evidence to doubt that this was a suicide. Hmm. But according to the electrician's statement, the victim seemed like he might be in a state to commit suicide. Indeed. There are too many uncertainties to be able to draw a conclusion at this point. Am 
and the fact that the electrician brought up uh, is a, the uh, the case being a suicide. I find that very I'm going suspicious. Going to have to investigate the scene for myself, little guy. Get me approval to enter the area. Oh, understood. You shouldn't have a problem, Doctor Kimishima. I'm sure my bosses will approve you right away. Yes, but I don't intend to waste any time. I'm going there right now. You deal with the rest on your end. <laughs> All right, time to go to the scene of the crime. Pixel hunt time, probably knowing knowing these kinds of games. All right, what do we got here? This is where the deceased's corpse was. If this blood stain is his blood, then... Actually, let's take a look at this again. Okay. If the blood... If... If he was on this... If he was laying on... If the blood stain is on the left side, this is where the then he had to be laying on his back. Right? Yep. Yes, the injury was on his left wrist. From the position of the blood stain, it would appear he was lying face up on the bed. There was only the one blood stain, so he didn't move around much after his wrist was slit. If this truly is a suicide, that would mean that he bled to death here. However, the amount of hemorrhaging here seems to be too small for a man to completely bleed out. Because... Because you need to bleed something like, what, 15... I think it's 1,500 cc's in order to bleed to death? Okay, what else do we have here? It's the ceiling fan. There's a speed selector and a timer. Hmm. One of the blades seems to be broken, though. Why would that be? Right. Right. If the repairman was working on the ventilation, he would have fixed that. Hmm. The electrician had supposedly come to fix the air. I need to review his testimony to confirm what he actually fixed. table. Hmm. Now that I look closely, the burns are most severe right here. What was burning here? If I send this for analysis, I might find out what was on fire on the table. in the picture the deceased's friend I see he was so caught up in the case that I didn't check the man's background wow I failed to think about the background too hello little guy can you hear me oh uh, yes I hear you did you need something Dr. Kimishima yes can you do me a favor and look into the deceased's friends I'm going to send you a picture right now try getting a hold on whoever that is Let's see. First, about the deceased himself. It'd be great to find out more about the day of the incident. All right. I'll make preparations to have them question. I'll send you the recordings of their answers, so please check the recorder. Good. I'm glad you can get on this so quickly. I'll be counting on you. All right. That wasn't too bad. It's 
not as much. Okay, finding the finding the picture the picture or the picture of the uh, deceased's family and friends that was a bit of a pixel hunt, but not too bad. All right, let's listen to this one, too. What you want, man? Why, why are you calling me out here? Huh? You want to talk about Dennis? <laughs> You're better off asking his girlfriend. Hmm. Her name's, uh, Stella. Yeah, she's at the club down on Roulette Street. It... Yeah, she can probably tell you more about Dennis than I can. That guy, huh? <laughs> no, nothing. He's a friend of mine, you know? I don't hate him. I mean, we had been drinking together the night before he... Okay... I mean, we had been drinking together the night before he died, after all. Uh... He did seem pretty flush recently. If you... Uh... He did... Uh... He called me up out of the blue and, uh, said he'd pick up the tab that night. That wasn't really important, it was just how he normally brags. He was all proud of this red Portland Jacks t-shirt. A Portland Jacks t-shirt. If he was telling the truth, the victim was wearing that shirt on the day of the incident. In any case, after hearing this testimony, it seems hard to believe that the deceased would have committed suicide. That reminds me. The man said in his interview that the deceased had a girlfriend. I wonder if HQ knows who she is. This is worth asking little guy about. Yes, did you call Dr. Kimishima? I need you to look into somebody for me. A woman named Stella Abbott. Oh, the deceased's girlfriend? Well, technically his ex. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Can you find her? We already have. HQ's just finished questioning her. Oh, should I send you the recording? Please. With all due haste. Now, if you don't mind. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting closer to understanding who Dennis Taylor really is. All right. Oh wait, I, oh wait, the recording's not live. Okay. So where was that t-shirt of his? Wait a minute, this is no t-shirt! That reminds me, someone mentioned the clothing that the deceased was wearing on the day of the incident. That's odd. There's nothing that stands out about the clothing. Somebody said something about what the deceased had been wearing that day. Hold on. That is an interesting piece of evidence. Something about this shirt is bothering me. That's right. The deceased was apparently wearing a red t-shirt on the day of the incident. Did he change after he got home? Or was there some reason for changing his shirt? All right, we need to have little guy analyze these. Uh, 
Uh... Hmm, this does raise some doubts. The electrician supposedly came to the victim's room to fix his air, but he didn't repair the ceiling fan? Or did the fan break after the electrician had left? That is... That's the most logical explanation, but why would... In any case, I'll need to hear his account again. This is a blood stain. One moment, please. I did some quick calculations. A stain of that size would take about 800 milliliters of blood. Hmm. The average adult male would have to lose at least 1,500 milliliters in order to bleed to death. This means that... Uh... He might not have bled to death. Well, the amount of blood loss required varies from person to person. So this isn't quite proof. It does suggest, though, that the that the that the cut was not lethal. It is unusual, though. I'll have to remember it. Hmm. Doctor Kimishima. Receive the voice data? From the deceased's girlfriend? Have you sent it? You should be able to listen to it using the recorder. Please listen to it when you can. Right. First, I want to know about the deceased's source of income. He did seem fairly well off for somebody without a steady job. Indeed. I'll be listening for that while I'm going over the recording. All right. over with huh Dennis you mean huh? okay wow that name brings back bad memories we broke up years ago yeah at first I thought he was an interesting guy pretty cool and all but he never had a job and he just kind of wandered through oh but he always had money I'm sure he didn't come by it honestly Ugh, are you really this slow don't you get it? Drugs. He was a drug dealer. Good heavens. The deceased's been holding on to quite a secret. Well! I'm going to have to change the way I approach this case. So if he was a... Uh, so if he was a drug dealer, this could have been a suicide after all. Let's go through the information we have, now that we know the deceased's true identity. Unbelievable. The deceased had this hidden dark side to him. This is looking more and more like a case worth investigating. If Dennis Taylor was a drug dealer, then there could be a variety of reasons to kill him. Still, I can't let my prejudices cloud the truth. I need to remain objective. However, it seems that we're going to have to change our views regarding this case. Right. I'll prepare the CSI's ALS. ALS? The advanced light source that can adjust the wavelength being emitted? That's right. An object's visibility depends on the light being reflected from that object. The ALS lets you select a particular wavelength to focus only on what you want to see. That's really neat. Or hide what you don't want to see. Uh, uh, oh, no. I'll try using it. Thanks, little guy. I'm gonna have to look at that, but I think there's another piece of evidence to get from the electrician. Right, what did he actually fix? Yes. Oh, uh... Oh, wait, I know where that was. Well, the way... Around three... Wait a minute. Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, the heat. Yeah. He fixed the heater. Something about that seems odd. Right, if this isn't late spring, then it's too hot to need the heater. Yes, the deceased's neighbor mentioned that. Summer is already starting. And yet, on the day of the incident, the deceased wanted to have his heater repaired? 
There's something strange about this after all. Alright, let's go back to the crime scene with the ALS and see what we can find. 